This tutorial gives you a quick introduction to StoryMaps.js, which is a great way to begin your journey into historical GIS and spatial storytelling. So uh, you can go to StoryMap, uh, StoryMaps.js on storymap.nightlab.com. And this is what you'll find when you get there. If you uh, don't have an account, uh, you'll need to sign up for an account. But once you have an account, then it's going to ask you to either create a new story map or open a previous story map. Now, I've already created a story map for this lesson, so I'm going to click here and open my sample story map. And this is what you're going to see, and it looks fairly similar if you're creating a new map too. You're going to have a base map here of the globe, and all of this will be blank, but uh, that's, that's, this, this is roughly the format that you'll see. On the left-hand side, you're going to see all of the slides, and you can add slides. This is very similar to something like PowerPoint. Your first slide is always going to be your title slide, and then after you've created your title slide, then each of these is going to be a point in your map. You'll notice that you can add media down here, and you can add text over here. This is, if you've done Timeline uh, timeline JS, this is really similar to Timeline JS. And then uh, you're in the Edit tab here. There's a Preview tab once you've started to do things. So let's get started. So this is my main page here. And what I've done is entered some of the information. So I said, I want to look at Worcester, Worcester, UK uh, in, in England. And I'm going to look at some of the buildings. So my title slide is going to say Worcester Buildings. And my text is going to say, here are some buildings in Worcester, UK. There we are. And I want a little image or a video or something to go with that. So I've decided to put an image, an engraving from the early 19th century of what Worcester looked like. So I put that here. In this line, I put the title, uh, the rights of what this is. And then below it, this you should think of as your alt text. This is text you want to give uh, to uh, folks who may not be able to view the image. And you'll want to provide text that their screen readers can, uh, can read for them. So this is the main page, and I've, I've created that. And then what you want to do is you want to add a second slide, which I've done here. So I've, I've added a second slide. And um, it doesn't always zoom in like this. Typically, you'll probably have something more along the lines of that global map we initially looked at until you start putting in locations. And you can search for locations or zoom in for locations by typing your locations in here. So again, I'm interested in Worcester, so I'm putting my location here. So it zoomed me into Worcester just by putting that information in. And I can use the plus to zoom in a little bit more. And then when I want, I can just double click anywhere on the map and move my pointer. Uh, move my my location uh, and so I can also drag and drop this if I want but I want it to be right uh, I don't want it to be right here I, that's the guild hall I actually want it to be a little further down here with the cathedral um, so I'll move that down here maybe I'll put it over here because it's closer to the image that I'm looking at so um, I have my point, I can put an image here. Now, you can upload an image, but what I prefer to do is just put a location online. If they are your own images, you may just wanna upload them, um, but I'm using Wikipedia images for this, so this is, this is perfectly fine. You could also put in other media as well. Like I said already, you could put in a YouTube video. This is where you put the rights. This is a photo that Edward Swift did of the cathedral, and this is the Creative Commons license that he provided uh, in Wikipedia, so I put that there. And then finally, I described what the image is, kind of an alt text type of thing. This will be the title. And this will be the text right here. And you can repeat. I did the same thing here for the guild hall. Put a media image, put the rights, put a description, put the title of my slide, and put the, uh, the, the, the subtext that I want to put here. And then also, this is where my 
point is going to be. And that's what you do for every slide on story map. And then when you go to preview, you can get a sense of what this actually looks like for the user. So let's go back to the beginning now. This is the landing page. You can see that because this is lit up here. And this would explain what the project is. And you can start exploring and it starts moving you through the story map here. And you can have as many slides as you like and as much text as you would like. And what you want to tell is a narrative based in the spatial relationships between the things that you're looking at. So this is kind of an exciting thing to do, but there's there's even something more interesting that you can do because we're looking at historical structures, but we're looking at a contemporary map. And a lot of times the contemporary map looks different than what you want to display with the historical structures. For example, a historical structure might not be there anymore, or what the context was of that historical structure has changed over the last 200 years or so. So you can go back and add a, a historical map. And you do that by using a geo, what's called a georectified map, which means a map that's been stretched and matched to contemporary coordinates. Because, uh, of course, each map has slight variations and, and you want to align those things together. I have a completely different video on this. You do this in a program called mapwarper.net and you can create the map warped image that's georectified and then you can grab a link from mapwarper.net and you can bring it into your timeline GS or I'm sorry your your story map JS and you do that by going here under options Actually, got to get out of the preview here. So I'm going under options here. And then what I'm going to do here is go under map types. Now the map default is the open street map. But if I open this up, you'll see I have a custom option. And what I've done already is I've grabbed the URL from mapwarper.net so that I can drop it in here. And you'll notice that the global map went away. But do not have any fear. Uh, if you zoom in here, you will be able to see it in preview. There we are. And so what I've done is I've layered over a historical map over the modern location. So we're looking at a, contempt uh, a historical map with historical documents, which is a little more engaging, I like to think, when you're a historian. And this map here that has contemporary locations may actually be important to your narrative as well. And like I said, you can always remove that anytime you want. You just go uh, into edit here. You can go under options. You can change it back to whatever you like here. Let's do a watercolor map. There we are. I'm not actually sure what this looks like, but if you hit preview, there's a watercolor map if you want to do something a little bit more artistic. I'm going to go back here and put in my custom map with my URL, close that up, and go back to my preview. This is what I want my users to see here. And you can see when you, when you uh, layer these in, it comes in little squares. That's because Map Warper has broken these into smaller images called tiles, and it allows the programs to work more efficiently over the web. Uh, you know, if you're zoomed in uh, to your map, you may not have to uh, load all of the tiles at once. You can load the tiles one at a time, and it saves bandwidth, and it, it makes your images load a little faster. So anyway, that is the short of the timeline, or I'm sorry, the... the uh, uh, Story Map JS. Um, Story Map JS has a lot of advanced functionality as well. If you're interested in getting into the coding of Story Map JS, you can do a lot of really impressive things. But this is just the basic introduction, and you can do a lot with what you have here. Um, finally, uh, if you want, you can um, you can export this and embed it into your own website. If you like, you just click share. And you can grab the link or you can uh, actually get the embed codes as well by scrolling down here and embed this in your website. So that's it. That's StoryMap.js.